vegan pay what you want restaurant on the brink. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look at the, the vegan pay what you want restaurant chain Lintel as anything and how they're at the brink. But before we go through an article from the Sydney Morning Herald discussing some of the issues facing this, this business, I thought first we'd have a look at a little bit about their brand to get a bit of an understanding. The Lintel as anything brand to see what they're putting out there, what claims they're making, what people and consumers would believe when they're going to this business. So this is their website here. Uh, hashtag Feed Australia help us provide more than 25,000 free and nutritious meals with free share and GoFundMe. You can see th food without borders. You know, even in isolation, everyone deserves a place at the table. So it's all about, f you know, their food security program. For the past 20 years, we're pr providing healthy food to Melbourne and Sydney, making sure those who cannot pay for a meal are able to share a table with those who can. Now, now, although we face a common threat, the impacts on vulnerable people, refugees and new migrants, or those socially isolated due to mental health issues, limited mobility, advanced age of homelessness, are already being felt more strongly. So, I mean, you know, they're giving out food, they're taking care of people. You can pay what you want, you know. It sounds nice, doesn't it? This seems like a friendly type of business that cares. That cares. Is it so? So they're on the brink. Let's have a look. Why? Let's look at this article from the Sydney Morning Herald. So vegan pay what you feel restaurant chain uh, lintel as anything. On the brink. For two decades, social enterprise lintel as anything has fed the disadvantaged and let customers pay whatever they feel a meal is worth. It's been a lifeline for many during the pandemic. But its social purpose has been undermined by mismanagement board upheaval and regulatory action from both the Fair Work Ombudsman for Wage Underpayment and the ATO for a large underpaid superannuation bill. So there you have it. <laughs> I mean, do you want to have all this charity and this goodwill for this business? Because yeah, you're going to get a whole lot of vegans and there are going to be a lot of left-leaning people there, a lot of people who are, uh, would be outraged over wage theft and, and want superannuation to be so high that businesses can't even afford to employ anyone in Australia. And then here you have this business, you know, underpaying, underpaying staff and not paying their super bills. This is why I encourage when everyone who's a worker, keep a track on your super just so you know that you're getting paid. Well, you know what would be better if it wasn't mandatory and all the money got paid to you every week or every month. That'd be even better. And then you could choose where to control your money. But we can't have that in Australia, can we? Anyway, back to this. On top of that, it had left a trail of unpaid taxes and creditors. Last year, it was on the brink of insolvency before it was bailed out by a GoFundMe campaign. Some detail around the, that raised questions about whether the social enterprise misled supporters about the nature of its financial difficulties. Lintel, as any thinks, high-profile founder Shanaka Fernando um, was unavailable for interview this week to discuss what has had gone on at the organization he founded and its restaurants in Abbotsfield, St Kilda, Thornbury and Newtown in Sydney. He quit the board late last year, leaving new chair Megan Evans at one stage its only board member before he recently rejoined. This sounds like a complete disaster. It sounds like a nightmare. Ms. Evans admitted there'd been problems in the organization and she was still trying to piece together what had happened, but she insisted she was working on fixing them. It's been a very awful, tricky situation, she said including a lack of expertise or capacity to meet regulatory deadlines. Well, maybe if you had a business model that didn't, <laughs> that didn't expect people to pay whatever they felt like it. I mean, is, honestly, is this just a bunch of do-gooder, uh, airy-fairy leftists, vegans, who don't understand the business world? You know, are getting a taste of reality, a taste of actually running a business. I mean, it's been running for 20 years. How can this be happening? Surely in 20 years time, you would have developed the skills and experience to run a business. What's going on? Is it just 
because of all of the uh, lockdowns, interventions, and just the, the fact that this business isn't capable. You know what it is. You know what it is. It's the first time they've had a recession. So for now, you know, the whole generosity of people goes out the window. This is turning into like a, a food kitchen or a, a charity. When it's not, it's run like a business. That's what it is. They're, they're, have, they're encountering their first recession in their business model and it's not stacking up. But she was adamant, lentil as anything, and its social purpose must work. If we have an, an economics of compassion, imagine what the world would be like. I'm, come on. That, that, that's not how life works. You don't just imagine how something will be and it'll miraculously be like this. There's a reason why. Uh, people don't appreciate something if they don't work for it. Sure, I've got nothing against charity. It has its place. And you help the downtrodden. But how many people are going to take advantage of something like this? How many students are going to go there and not pay? You know, come on. She said, if we're not a role model for other businesses, then what am I doing? Well, you're wasting your time. You're not a role model for other businesses. You're failing a business. You're not paying your super. You're not paying your wages. How, that, that's not being a role model. If you want to help people, you create economic opportunity. That's how you help people. You get you give people jobs. There's no point claiming you're a role model if you're not paying your workers. If you're breaking the law. Despite its altruistic purposes, lentil as anything is no lentil as anything is no small operation. Turning over more than three million a year, even though the average price a customer pays is about four fifty a meal. Three million a year isn't that much for how many restaurants do they have? One, two, three, four just in Sydney? Three million ain't much. The group provides meals for the homeless and gives work and other opportunities to the disadvantaged. During the pandemic, it delivered more than 1,000 free meals a week to those in need. Yet its financial accounts from recent years make for a grim reading. It owed staff at least 155,000 in unpaid superannuation. $155,000. I'm sure, I mean, what are you going to say, guys? You know, you can't have it both ways. You can't claim to have this this brand where you're all, you know, what do they got here? You know, they've got love, compassion, everything. I don't think we saw it on here. It's on the other website. But you can't claim all of this if you're not paying your staff. Bring it here. Is, is it, how do you want to do it, guys? What side do you want to be? Come on. So they were under investigation by the Ombudsman for an unspecified amount of wage underpayment. The Ombudsman said its investigation has now been finalized. The restaurant chain's position has since improved after it raised $373,000 last year as part of a GoFundMe campaign. Its GoFundMe pitch claimed that before the pandemic it had been self-sustainable and able to fund its social projects through its own cash flow, but the pandemic threw a spanner in our organizational model, so it looks like that's not true. But its own financial accounts tell a different story. It was already on the brink of insolvency and under multiple regulatory investigations nearly a year before the pandemic hit. When asked if it had misled its supporters in the GoFundMe campaign, Ms. Evans, who was not on the board at the time, said she was, it was staff who took the lead on the fundraiser, not the board. The GoFundMe fundraiser was in the name of Lentil as anything and the proceeds went to it. It doesn't, yeah, you, she's shifting the blame. I've, wow, why would you take on? So I remember when I was in a, when I just started my business, we'd gone to this shared office space and I was asked by one of the organizers to go on the board because they wanted to do art projects and all these type of things. And I just wanted to pay to have a little corner to have a desk in the city. It was dirt cheap. It was, it was, you know, a terrible location. I remember we helped, we donated like a, found a boardroom table for them and they just destroyed it, did all these stupid art projects on it and the whole thing went under and collapsed. So I'm really glad I, I, I said no to that. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't go on the board. When they started bringing in all these social requirements to people, that, that's when we just left. Miss Evans and Lentil as anything 
was now addressing how it communicated and how it was run. A project is a kind of social experiment, really. No, it's not. It's a business that gives away food that's been going for 20 years. It, you should be running better than this. Relying on social trust and the need to ensure there's no exploitation of that generosity, whether of volunteers or supporters. She has welcomed the scrutiny from le regulators. Why would you welcome that? I don't believe they are institutions that have any intent to put people out of business. I might actually look forward. Oh, wow. Wow. She doesn't think they're going to put people out of business. That's the whole point of these regulators. They'll destroy your business. They'll pull it apart. They'll pretend like they'll help you. The tax department is the second biggest organization that makes people bankrupt in this country. How experienced is this person? How experienced? Is she just a volunteer or someone that's been taken on it? Wow. Oh, that's sad. The enterprise is staffed by volunteers who can receive a stipend and paid staff who were shortchanged because they were paid under the wrong workplace award, Miss Evans said. They've now paid back every dollar, she said. Despite the significant reduction in debt after the fundraiser, lentil as anything is not in the clear yet, it needs more volunteers and support. It's not as if we don't need the help we do, she said. What do you all think here with regards to Ben's take on this one? I mean, it's a nice goal for Lentil as anything to provide this for people, but you know, what are the solutions to this, guys? What are the solutions to this? I think it's really simple. Don't rob Peter to pay Paul. Don't underpay your staff and avoid paying super to do charity work. And and think you've got a, a you know, a mor you want to be a role model to other businesses. 20 years they've been going. Surely in that time, that's a well-established business. They've got models in place to deal with it. Or have they just been winging it all this time? What do you reckon, everyone? I mean, frankly, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I mean, lentils aren't really not a good food but still maybe a beef restaurant that'd be great so let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below have you ever eaten there what would you pay to support their mission do you think you know that's a viable business as always let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below if you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content i create here there's a few ways you can support us you can join us on youtube or patreon you can support us using our affiliate links at amazon ebay independent reserve or aussie broadband you can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.